All right, we are back. It's game time and a chance for us to talk about key coaching points and key little strategies while you're going through these six crazy workouts. Uh, I love the programming. I think it's a totally wide spectrum of things that we should be hitting to be able to establish who's going to be the person to make it to the games. And uh, first workout has handstand push-ups. So what we're going to do is we're going to address how to uh, use our framework of position movement purpose to be able to go through those 30 if you're doing individual or 50 as a team and what that should look like and how to maximize your effort and keep it consistent throughout and keep you breathing and, and following through. So first workout, run a thousand, 30 push-ups, row a thousand. When you get into the handstand push-up business, uh, there are a couple things that we're seeing that they set up a station that has two plates and an ab mat in between. We don't have an ab mat here, which is no big deal. And then the plates on the sides, they have the Lico plates or the CrossFit Games plates uh, that are a little bit different than the Rogue plates. These are 25 pound Rogue plates. Um, but that doesn't really matter. The reason why they do that most likely is because it forces you to standardize where the hands are gonna go so they don't go too wide, don't go too close in or too far away from the wall. So there's just a little surface area that you can work through. The cool thing about it is that we can hit different angles of that shoulder position as we go through the movement and it actually allows everyone to use their own strategy or whatever corner they feel they're stronger in. So what we're gonna talk about is how do we take this handstand push-up that we've been talking about so much with this chest against the wall into back against the wall and what that means. When we start addressing these things now, it comes down to a couple of things. Uh, when we train and prepare for any kind of movement, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create through gymnastics, kinesthetic awareness. That's something that we do from a conscious standpoint. We can control every single variable, and hopefully if we do that, when we come to the unknown or time to freestyle, we have our sixth sense or proprioception kick in in a better way. Proprioception is basically uh, the mechanism that our body has to be able to control limbs without really looking at them. So same thing happens here. So we're gonna talk about key coaching points or key progression points here to be able to address this movement and then how to cue yourself to make sure that the execution is perfect meaning that I don't have to look at the mat as I'm moving it's just like when I'm driving if I had to look at my hands as I'm driving I will miss a bunch of stuff happening outside and there you go you're off the road and that's no fun same thing happens here if I'm looking at the mat or at the ab mat as I'm doing my handstand push-ups I'm gonna be missing out on a lot of things and I'm gonna be crashing and burning quickly so let's use our framework of position movement purpose here there are two positions that we're gonna be hitting one is a headstand at the bottom and two is a handstand at the top when we do back against the wall the position is a little bit different. We actually end up in our handstand in a globally extended body position. This globally extended body position is totally legit as long as there's no breakage in the system, meaning that my butt is not off, my shoulder isn't broken, my rib cage isn't flying. This is what uh, Kelly calls being overextended when you have that stripper butt going on. Uh, this is what some people know as hyperlordosis when the lower back is going into that overextension there's too much of that arch or even uh, what Kelly has been calling lately a uh, open circuit dysfunction where the body as a system now has a leakage and we're losing or missing out. So that's some of the stuff that we have to think about. When we go into that global extension or kick up fully into the handstand, we have to have butt on, belly on, and now we can globally extend or flex however we want. And making sure that the shoulder, which is the main mover in this case, is working with us and finishes strong. Being able to address um, the starting and finishing position is key because that will be your reset button. There will be two chances that you have during your handstand push-up to be able to reset. One at the top when we fully lock out, meaning shoulder gets all the way up into our ear, the belly butt is tight, and two at the bottom in the headstand. Because of this back against wall, heel against the wall position, at the bottom, most likely, a lot of people are going to miss out on some basic concepts and you're going to be losing some power and performance down the line. So we're going to talk about how do we take a strict handstand push-up with the concept of 
belly to the to the wall how do we address that and then how do we reset in the middle of the workout in case we lose our positioning and we start lacking performance so first thing to talk about uh, just because we're doing uh, back against the wall doesn't mean that our concept of moving the shoulder first changes everything stays the same so here's the deal we have shoulder that can abduct or adduct depending on what you're doing so it can move away or towards us that's your frontal plane it can move into flexion or extension in front of you this is kind of your sagittal plane when we talk about uh, injured athletes that come from surgery or have uh, uh, issues going on with the shoulder we talk about this scaption plane a lot a lot of people talk about this kind of mixed plane and this mixed plane goes approximately 30 to 45 degrees away from the frontal plane. So this is my frontal plane, 30 to 45 degrees in front of me. That's my scaption plane. That's where I am. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to here. And all of a sudden, this looks like our tripod. The reason we work in this position is because it facilitates opening up external rotation, allowing the shoulder to be really integrated in the movement from all different angles and perspectives so all axes of rotation and all planes of motion are working approximately balanced so that scaption plane 30 to 45 degrees is where you want to be if we could take that same angle to our handstand push-up it would take us into this tripod position that tripod position is going to be a key starting and finishing position okay so Start thinking about where do your hands go in between 30 and 45 degrees. Remember, we can't have the heel off the ground, uh, off the plate. It has to be on it. It can't be off the side. It can't be inside. It can't be in the little hole. We only have this surface area right here. So everyone has different length and limbs and have different sizes, but it's not about where the hand placement goes. It's where about the shoulder placement goes. So we have that 30 to 45 degree. When I bend my arms, where does that go? Can I measure that out? Okay, that's right there. So that's where I'm gonna be kicking up the handstand. That's my width. So that's the first thing. Set up, try to find your angle. That's gonna be the most efficient one. If you haven't been training that, meaning creating kinesthetic awareness, when it's time to execute, it's gonna be very hard. But because you still have a day before this weekend, now you can start getting into this and start thinking about how you do it. And if not, for those who are training for 2012, let's get it going.